How do you do? Good morning. Miss Wentworth, you don't know me, but I saw you perform in court the other day at the Samelli hearing. I like the way you handle yourself. Well, thank you. Won't you sit down? Yeah. I've got a little business proposition I'd like to talk over with you, alone. Oh, you can speak freely. This is my partner, Miss Davis, Mr. Uh... I'm Frank Gordon. How do you do, Mr. Gordon? Hello. Miss Wentworth, maybe you know I'm mixed up in a lot of enterprises around this town. Yes, I've heard rumors. Good. Then we understand each other. From now on, you're going to be my mouthpiece. And uh, here's $10,000. Uh, just as kind of a retainer. Uh, no, thanks, Mr. Gordon. I, I don't believe that we're interested. You see, we have as much business as we can handle without taking on any new clients. Forget the rest of your clients. I want you to... What's the matter? Isn't 10000 enough? The fee's quite satisfactory. It isn't that. Just that, um... Well, we're not in a position to handle your business right now. <laughs> now, who are you trying to fool, Miss Wentworth? Well, you're starving to death around here. That $10,000 is more dough than you'll handle in the next two years with this layout. Maybe all right. We're still not interested. Is that plain? Okay. Plain enough for me. Goodbye, Miss Wentworth. Goodbye. And, uh, Miss Davis? Goodbye. You better think it over, Miss Wentworth. I could throw a lot of things your way. After all, I do a big business, and legitimate, too. Mary Wentworth, do you know how much $10,000 is? I know. But do you know who that was? I don't care if it's Jesse James. $10,000 is a lot of money for a couple of girls just starting out to fight life's battles. Boy, oh boy, the battles I could fight for $10,000. But not Frank Gordon's battles. Jesse James was a boy scout compared to him. Why, well, he's the biggest racketeer in town. No. Yes. And we're not interested in that kind of business. Well, goodbye. I can't keep the district attorney's office waiting. $10,000. $10,000. You are listening to They Must Be Destroyed on Sight. The following podcast contains adult language, adult situations, and spoilers for the movies discussed occur often. You have been warned. Now, take it away, Dr. Rausch. They must be destroyed on sight! Hello and welcome back. It is They Must Be Destroyed on Site, episode 226. And I am your host, Lee, as sober as a judge, Russell. Joined by my co-host, Daniel. Class, personality, and legs, Harper. How you doing, sir? Unfortunately, uh, you don't get to uh, see the legs, but uh, we'll show you off the class and personality tonight, I assure you. Yeah, uh uh-huh. well... Va va boom, uh, mm. and uh, we're the also legs. Joined. You'll have to wait for the for the OnlyFans version of this. Podcast. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There you go. And of course, we're also joined by our co-host uh, Lee, a smart dame with plenty of moxie. Hardy, how are you doing? I do have plenty of moxie, and I plan to show it. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to be. Uh, you're not going to be a housewife. No, never. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to have a fun conversation about one of I these movies. Be, definitely. I think I think this is going to be a fun episode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, so we we're originally going to do three uh, episodes here from the uh, sort of Glinda uh, Feral disc. One of them had an error on it and we were like, you know, what? Well, we won't bother. We'll just drop it. And actually from like the 38 minutes I did watch of it, it was like, that's the inferior movie and in, on the disc as far as I was concerned. <laughs> so it's like, we're not missing much, but we are going to be doing the law in her hands from 1936 and dance Charlie dance from 1937. Uh, both of them feature Glenda Farrell, not in the uh, main starring roles, unfortunately, but they do sort of highlight her sort of career at this point as, you know, this is the girl we put in to be the spunky, you know, uh, fun. The brassy blonde. The brassy yeah. blonde. Yeah. No. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I actually, I think also 
once we get into the conversations here, there's some uh, other interesting uh, female players that pop up in both of these films that uh, oh, yes. we'll talk about. Very so, much. yeah. But before then, we'll get into what we've watched in the last little while. So uh, I'll go over to you first. Uh, Lady Lee, you have something you wanted to mention. So I recently watched Vamps. It is a absolutely terrible movie. Uh, the storyline, I was actually kind of interested because the idea of, is like these two modern vampires. It was done in the, I think, 90s. No, maybe, or whatever. It doesn't matter. I know it's early 2000s. I can't remember exactly. But uh, just these modern va- vampires trying to live in the this new world. And 2012. Of, <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> uh, with, directed by Amy Hackerling with Alicia Silverstone and Kristen Ritter. It gets oh. worse. <laughs> All I have to say, um, it must have been the '90s, like eight years ago. Yeah, <laughs> but just the way they were dressed and like the words they were using, I honestly thought like it was it was done earlier. Like it it. It wasn't hip at all. <laughs> would, it, would it help you to understand that Amy Hackerling also directed Clueless? Yes, it mm. would. Yes. Uh, and, only... and Fast Times at Ridgemont High, for that matter. Yeah. Because at first, like with the, uh, it had that like Clue-esque beginning, but now she's what, in her 30s? Clueless was how long ago? And now you're trying to pull that same thing? Like it just. Clueless it... was in the 90s. It was. Yeah, yeah it was. It like Clueless had its kind of place in the whole movie world, like one of those cult classics, like the ones that when you're in the 90s, you have to watch this uh, as a repeat on a different direction movie. It was awful. It I, I kind of like the idea because it was a, like these two modern vampires, which I didn't really care for. But one of them fell in love with uh, a Van Helsing descendant. So I thought that was kind of a cute like idea of a story. But as you watch it, it just gets worse and worse and worse. Like, there's some big names in that movie, and it is terrible. <laughs> Nothing good about it. Like, it is like it is, is foreshadowing my list for, like, first watches, worst watches. Like, that's all i got to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you want to see a really good, in the last few years, like, modern vampire movie about vampires living in the modern world... Watch uh, Jim Jaramusch's Only Lovers Left Alive, which is really good. And, I mean, it's it's Jim Jaramusch, so, I mean, yeah. he, us- he rarely fucks up. <laughs> he's, he's had a couple stinkers in his career, but it's been very, very rare. Yeah, I got a couple I'll, I'll mention here really quick. I watched Arctic from 2018. It just popped up on Netflix. It's a Mads Mikkelsen uh, film. It's a mm-hmm. survival film. It's basically uh, Mickelson has, you know, he's crashed in the Arctic, his plane crashed, and he's been surviving. And what I liked about this film is it is, you know, the man against nature kind of film, but it, it puts you right in the middle of his story. Like he's been there already for like a couple of weeks, probably living in the Arctic and actually surviving. So it's not like it doesn't show you like the, the sort of build up to him, you know, flying there and crashing and all that bullshit and like learning to survive. Like he's already doing it. So you see his routine every day of where he goes out to his fishing holes. He's got, and the whole system he's got of going around trying to get his distress beacon to like pick up a signal or whatever. So, and then his map he has drawn and he's, and he's going all around this fucking big Valley that he crashed in and like going to all the different points on the ridge and shit. And all of a sudden one day a helicopter shows up and he thinks it's there to rescue him, but it's actually not. It just crashes and he has to rescue a woman from the helicopter. And he decides, well, fuck, I can't stay here because not only do I have to get her somewhere to help her because (laughs) I don't have enough food to feed myself and her. Um, There's also a polar bear wandering around and <laughs> it it's smelling the fish i've been uh, bringing up from the ice and it's gonna <laughs> fuck with me so and so it, it just gets into this really hardcore man versus nature thing where he's got to make harsh decisions and stuff and it's really well done mickelson is just his face is so sharp and weathered anyway and in, in real life that it just works for this kind of film where you, where you just buy that this is a guy who has survived in the Arctic for a couple of weeks after crashing kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And he, it's a mostly silent performance. He doesn't say a lot. Of course, I thought it was really good. I, I think it's actually one of the best sort of like man versus nature stranded in the wilderness sort of films I've ever seen. Like it's really good. It doesn't go for uh, big Oscar Beatty moments or anything like that. Like it's not, 
it's not the Martian, for example, which I also really like, but yeah. I mean, that movie does go for the Oscar bait kind of moments. This never does that. It's just very straightforward. He's, he's just struggling to survive and he runs into all these shitty little things that happen to him that are like potentially deadly in the environment he's in. And I thought it was really good. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's very much worth watching. Uh, I'd, I'd never heard of this movie too. It like 2018 and it just popped up yeah. on Netflix and I was like, okay, did it just get released now or did it like, was it re- actually released at some point two years ago? <laughs> like, I, I don't know. But uh, the other one I'll mention, and this is sort of like a thread I've been following in like just horror movies. I've been watching a lot of Spanish horror movies uh, in the last couple of years, tr- just trying to like expand my uh, horizons a little bit. And uh, this one is called Don't Listen uh, from 2020. And it is a surprisingly good and original sort of haunted house tale from Spain that I really liked. Um, It's about husband and wife. They're house flippers and they have a young child. And so they go to all these different, they buy these houses in Spain, they flip them and try to make a profit. And then they buy a new house and move on and, and yada, 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 you know, try to try to make money. They try to house flip this really old mansion uh, that they've put all their money into. So they're stuck there. They can't fucking leave. So that that's the one thing I like about it. It's like, you know, you know, the criticism of uh, haunting movies is always, why don't they just leave the fucking house? Like, just, just get the fuck out of there. They can't mm-hmm. leave because their money is tied into this house. Like they'll, they'll be on the streets if they leave. Yeah. So they go to this, this haunted mansion, uh, ghost stuff starts happening. Uh, the way it's presented is, uh, their their kid is talking to a ghost over his little um, uh, walkie talkie, and and the ghost sort of like communicates through like digital signals and stuff like that. And I won't give away the twist to what the ghost actually is, but it's actually a really neat reveal that sort of harkens back to Spain's past. And I just like the balls this movie had because it does things that you don't expect a ghost movie to do. It really felt like the Spanish version of uh, let's do every 1970s sort of haunted house movie and then and, and put it all in the one film and like do it really well. Like it's very cliched, but they do the cliches so well. And it has a really hard edge to it that I really appreciated. And I thought it was really, really good. And uh, that's on Shutter. I watched that on. So, oh, nice. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. nice. So really good. Easy to get. Easy to get hold of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I looked up Arctic for you. Um, yeah. It competed in Cannes in 2018. Okay. Uh, it competed for the Palme d'Or. Uh, it is very well reviewed, um, and it is an Icelandic production. Uh, oh. So it was released in the United States. Uh, apparently, box office is 4.1 million. Um, so mm. it's got some kind of release, but you know. Um, yeah, so, mm, but it's, I mean, it's really good, and I mean, and now Netflix a, bought it, so you know, yeah, <laughs> you can watch it on Netflix, so it's great. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, you know, Mick, I I really like Mickelson. I think he's great. So, yeah, yeah, no, he's great. Yeah, yeah, Agreed. yeah. All right, so uh, we're going to take a quick break, uh, play a podcast promo and some music, and we're going to come back. And the first one we're going to talk about is Dance Charlie Dance. Uh, there's this show called Movie Melt, and you probably know about it. Uh, and it's once every two. I have no idea how often this is uploaded. <laughs> and it's a show where a bunch of compañeros gets together and we play some fun games, trivia mainly. Uh, we talk about new releases. Uh, we have some fun games where we try and guess the title of a movie based on stuff that really probably religious people write on IMDb. <laughs> Yeah, it takes about 20 hours to record. There's always a failure midway through. Uh, and then the highlight of the week of the, of the show is um, reviewing a movie. Usually it's kind of a interesting, lesser known cult type movie. And it's uh, quite enjoyable. It sounds good in theory, yes. <laughs> I might have a listen one day. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Tell me who's this by my 
side This girl with eyes like gems And cool reactions to your lies Lies la 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 lies She can't repeat what you put round All the things that made me cry You kicked me when I was down And they hurt me all those lies talking now about dance charlie dance from 1937 and uh this is directed by frank mcdonald uh he worked for pretty much every studio in his career he's very much a journeyman sort of director did 114 films as a director in his 30-year career basically wow. uh almost all of them westerns apparently uh i was looking at the list and i was like <laughs> shooting like four at a time <laughs> yeah, the no. same sets you know, same camera angle you just you know flip in the next guy and you know, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah no this guy was uh he was just like plowing through them like he he did yeah. an impressive amount of and the uh, interesting there was like an anecdote about how uh, someone said he was like the most uh like nervous director he'd ever seen like a guy who just was not cool with directing but at the same time he still like pumped out 114 films so yeah you know um he had his method you gotta, I guess. You gotta love when you find somebody's uh, i am uh, not i am to be but their um wikipedia and it's just selected filmography and it's a list of like 40 movies <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh so written by crane wilbur william jacobs george s kaufman i looked into their credits Here, here's the problem what we're, we're in the period now where everybody has like a thousand credits and it's <laughs> like i'm i'm just i'm not gonna i'm not gonna wade through them um we have uh, Stuart. I mean, I Irwin. think Glenda Farrell at one point was making like four movies at a time for mm-hmm. like three or four years in a row. So yeah, she she did in 1936 alone. Well, 1936 and 1937, 14 films between 1936 and 1937. Wow! Holy jeez! Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we got Stuart Irwin as Andrew Andy Tucker. Uh, we have uh, Jean Muir as uh, Mary Matthews. And uh, she plays the secretary here. I want to highlight her because she actually is historically significant as far as uh, filmmaking goes. She's the first performer to be blacklisted uh, after her name appeared in the infamous anti-communist 1950 pamphlet, Red Channels. So she's the first one. And also, she's just kind of a badass because she incurred the dis disfavor of studio executives because of her involvement in the formation of the Screen Actors Guild and her tendency to question the way the film business operated (laughs) and her resonance or her resistance to posing for publicity photographs. So she was like, should we be making movies this way? And no, I'm not going to take fucking uh, glamour shots. Fuck you. I'm an actress. I'm working here. Like, yeah. (laughs) That's awesome. You fucking communist. (laughs) What do you mean you don't want to be a pinup girl? Come on. And that's the thing. Yeah, like she's she, great. she's and, great. and that's the thing. Also, she she's 
big quote is saying she she was not a fan of, fan of communism or anything like I she she was lumped into the communist thing because she was like part of some sort of women's rights group or something like that, which yeah. would made oh, her okay. a, made her a dissident and, you know, which means communist, basically. So we have uh, Glenda Farrell as Fanny Morgan, Alan Jenkins as, as Elf Morgan, Addison Richards as Gordon Fox. Uh, Mary Treen as uh, Jenny Wolf, Charlie Foy as Phil Mac MacArthur, Chester Clute as Elvin Gusset, call it uh, Lyons as Bobby Benson. I looked into her sort of filmography. It was cut short because she married the son of William Randolph Hearst. Yes, she did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, you don't need to be acting anymore. Apparently. Yeah. Yeah, but, mm. uh, yeah, she was she was the one with the legs. So, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what she's there for. Uh, Tommy Wonder as Charlie, Frank Phelan as Ted Parks, Robert Homans as Tim the Doorman, and yada, yada, yada. We don't really need the rest. We have an IMDb here from a uh, synopsis here from Stephen Eichenberg. says a stage struck small towner is tricked in backing a s- bad straight play, but it turns out to be an unintentional <laughs> comedy hit. Problems arise when he is sued for plagiarism. But yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, we'll get into this. There's not much plot in this film. It's it's no, very it much no. It's it's there's not a lot going on. Um, but uh, at the same time, I think it's pretty enjoyable. But we'll get into our thoughts here. I'll throw over you first, Daniel. What what are your sort of general thoughts on this? Uh, I thought this was a lot of fun. Personally, I was um, you know I could just kind of watch it this afternoon. Mm-hmm. Wasn't really expecting much from it. I'm kind of like, you know, I really wanted to see the law in her hands because of the premise. Mm -hmm. And then this one kind of came along with the disc. And so I'm like, all right, fine, I'll check it out. And I I was kind of, you know, doing that, like, check your phone kind of thing at the beginning of the movie. And then, you know, you kind of get into it. You know, it's Mm -hmm. got some pretty impressive, like, stage production. I think it's worthwhile noting that this was based on a 1925 play, Mm -hmm. which was made into a movie, like, seven times or something like that. Yeah. Um, And this is, like, the fifth of seven. So, you know, this is a... uh, (laughs) Yeah. That's actually my only trivia thing on this, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Like, the first first time this was made, the, the play was made into a film was in the silent era. Mm-hmm. So, you know. I could see that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can only imagine what the silent version of this looks like. Uh, the the lead here, Stuart Irwin, is uh, Andy Tucker. I'm. Uh, I was kind of like, you know, he's got he's got an impressive stage presence. He's, mm-hmm. he's kind of, you know, yeah. you can kind of tell he's, you know, he's definitely a star. You know, kind of in the making at that point. He's got real real comedy chops. At first, I'm kind of like, I don't know how much of this movie this guy's going to be in, and I'm not sure how. You know how how much this kind of like starstruck guy from the Hicks of you know Athens, <laughs> the Hicks of the Athens. Sticks, like he says. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't know quite how quite how well that's going to play off. But then uh, as the movie goes on, I mean, he really does sell the sort of the. I mean, it's a comic transformation, but it's definitely a transformation of the character. And you definitely, see, like, no, there's a there's a real character here, and, and it's, it kind of gets interesting. Um, lots of very lovely ladies here. I mean, I think Glenda Farrell like steals the fucking mm. movie off underneath everybody. Even like she just sits in the background and like motions, and suddenly her eyes are just drawn straight to her. I mean, she's really, really radiant and really amazing in this, yeah. and just really funny. And it's got a lot of that kind of screwball energy that I wasn't necessarily expecting. I was kind of expecting something that's a little bit more of a generic. It's very know, uh, it's, musical. It's, it's very snappy, like the front page. Yeah. Like it reminds yeah, me a lot of that. Definitely borrowing from that same kind of basic DNA in terms of. I mean, it's not not as good as Howard Hawks' dialogue, but I mean, mm-hmm. it's an hour long. It's fun. It's breezy. There's not a whole lot to it, um, but it is just you know people running around and you know convincing rich guys to write them checks. You know, <laughs> for, you know for for yeah, for I wish I had that money. And then uh, you know, and then uh. In the end, um, <laughs> they, they pull a fast one on the on the legal team. You know, I, I kind of want there to be a crossover between these two movies, where the lawyers from the law <laughs> end up crossing over, and we end up in a, in a legal battle, protracted yeah. legal battle, twelve part prestige HBO drama, which is all about the plagiarism trial. Of the, yeah, of play. You know, it's it's a, it's a, it's a you know it's a, a multiverse crossover. So the Glinda Farrell of this world meets the Glinda Farrell of the Law in Her Hands, and yeah. they have some sort of meet cute thing, yeah. you know. And I, I got a feeling they'd both be into like making like uh, yeah. stage staging crime photos for evidence or whatever. But yeah, oh yeah, uh, yeah. Really, really. <laughs> and also probably making out as well. That's kind of the other. That's... Oh, I like that idea too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. 
two Glenda yeah. Ferrells for the price of one. Yeah, you're, mm. you're good. yeah, yeah. No, uh, no but I, there, there's not much here. It's really, really enjoyable. I wish this was easier for people to get a hold of. Yeah, um, it is. I mean, you do have to pretty much pay for this. I mean, it's almost impossible to find online. Mm-hmm. But um, it's, it's. I mean, I'm not sorry. I spent the money for this DVD. Like uh, even just for this movie, it was, it was a lot of fun. So yeah, uh, Lee. I, I have to say, um, when you brought up the joke of uh, Glenda Farrell making the the camera pictures, I have a note that says "law movies, teehee," just because of the <laughs> the association of like the lawyer and then them being lawyers. Anyways, yeah, I thought that, that was kind of funny. Um, I absolutely love this movie. Uh, it gave me such a like that you the whole like, thing that you told me that it's a play makes so much sense because in my notes I literally wrote this feels like a play. Um, it kind of gave me the vibe, like it gives you that um, Abbott and Costello, like who's on first, like that kind of interaction, like the whole time when at the beginning, when they do the check where it's like, yeah, this is a good deal. Like you got to do it. You got to think on your right feet, like just that interaction. And at the end, that anxiety that you get, because like there's so much chaos going around. I just I love that feeling like it was it was done yeah. really well. Like it just the set was so simple because when you look at it, there's what? three or four different sets there's really not that much no and there's only the one camera angle it doesn't switch like it's them very much playing the camera the whole time they just Mm. have this one camera and i i just i thought it was good i really loved it i i love the energy and um you commented about annie tucker yeah it's awesome you played this like weird awkward person to the super cocky confident person to this weird awkward person again and there was just such a, a roller coaster of emotions with him like you you felt so bad from the beginning and then when he became an asshole you're like oh wait i kind of hate you now and then at the end you're like wait no i really love you again i don't know i i, I thought the chemistry between all of the actors was so good alf and fanny when they're arguing mm-hmm. yep. oh that was so good and then uh with alf and his um i can't remember his name now but the coworker. Yeah, the partner uh, he had. Uh, yeah, MacArthur. Mac- yeah, there we go, MacArthur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mac, I think they just called him. Um, that was really good too. Uh, same with like all the interactions with all the different characters. I really liked Colette at the beginning because she played this yep. like goofy, dumb blonde. Like she just awkward. Like even on stage when she was doing the dance, she had so much enthusiasm. Like you just, I just thought it was well, so good. She did, and also, <laughs> also she thought she was like too. Like I don't know if she thought she was too good for it, or if she was just lazy because she didn't try at all. She was just like, "Fuck this!" It's like, I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna do whatever I want. <clears throat> As an actress, though, like I thought she just did so good at that. Like you, could oh yeah, tell. No, no. she was very like, good. Yeah, yeah, and um, no, I, the women. I kind of like so to think beautiful. that she's just. I just like to be in front of the, yeah. like, the real dancers are behind me, and I'm the star because yeah. I've got the legs. And I think that's the. I think that's yes. the sort of vibe she's going very for. much yeah. so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but all the women are so beautiful. Like it's mm-hmm. as if they oh, yeah. just handpicked. They're like, "Hey, if you're hot, please be in our movie." Uh, <laughs> they all have that same well, hairstyle too. <laughs> yeah, they were. They were gorgeous welcome, women. welcome to the 1930s. Like, believe me, there's a reason we go back to this well in the 30s and 40s as often as we do. Yeah. I love I I love it I love it I love the the clothes I love the makeup I love all of it like I just love the style from back then there was just so many things like the puns that they did the trap door gag like it mm-hmm. was so like tongue in cheek the whole time like it was a very uh, comedic experience and uh, like I was saying it was like a play it was a lot of the reactions too I did um, Edward Allen B Zoo story as a play once and there's a lot of those scenes that I just kind of felt from this movie like it just had that same vibe like that same energy. And I thought it was just hilarious. Like I, I, I loved it. I thought it was a really good movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, for myself, I had a really good time with this. Uh, again, I wasn't expecting much, and then I got into it, and I was like, "Oh no, they're they're really like firing off here. Like they're they're kind of doing like the best of this kind of like you know riffing fun." witty sort of comedy and they're like they've got it you know sort of encapsulated in an hour uh whereas you know a lot of these would be you know an hour 20 or something like that where there'd be a bit more meat but yeah they, they just could they supposed just... to be like the second feature i think i think all these were like sort of like you see like your hour 20 minute movie yeah it's real you get a thing and then like second movie comes on so it's like an evening at the movies with these were meant to be the yeah you get out it, but we're done you know, <laughs> like, you know yeah yeah like um, I liked I liked all the actors in this. I thought they were all way working way above the material. Really, the, you know, the material is fine, but it's very standard. It's just it's basically just you know, Yoko gets caught up with showbiz people, gets you know corrupted, gets conned a little bit, 
But at the end, everything happens, you know, pretty much magically, everything falls into falls place. In and place. It, yeah, <laughs> and everyone gets the money. It's screwball. I mean, it's the mm-hmm. end of the comedy, right? You know, um, yeah, I get the feeling I would love to read the play or see the play because I looked up the play and um, there it's so like, well reviewed at the time it was released. And then it kind of has it has this kind of extended life. Mm-hmm. Um, I suspect that uh, there's some like context and some like history, some some deeper material that we're just kind of missing in this yeah. version of it. Um, like the play within the play, I think has like we really don't get an idea about like what exactly the storyline of this movie yeah. is supposed to be. Oh, like, when they try to explain it, like you know, and then there's a girl in an orchard, and then like she's climbing in the tree, and then like no, there's a guy, and he's got the he's a yogi. Well, what's yogi? Oh, he's got the towel on his head, you know, and it's like that- oh wow. 1930s racism but yeah. it's sort of charming in a like yeah. terrible way <laughs> i mean that that that's a great scene also <laughs> just just because it, it does put you in andy's shoes because they're trying to explain the plot to you of the play and it's like you yeah. don't get it he don't get it you you well, immediately... i love i love the moment where like they start to go okay and so there's a dancing girl and then like okay then you dance and so the guy dances you know <laughs> yes! and, it's like, and then you got the, the other thing and then like they're they're like using the objects in the office oh um, it was so the, good Play the, and, and, and we're putting out a play within a play within a play almost kind of thing. And, you know? Yeah. And Andy keeps asking, so oh, so this is where Charlie comes in, right? No, no, this is another guy. And then yes. by the end of it, he's like, So what happens to Charlie? It's like, oh, oh, Charlie, yeah, Charlie. Uh he does this. He's the guy who's He's a faithful the, man. Yeah, he's a faithful man. And that that hits home for Andy because he's a small town guy who believes in those sort of, you know, values and stuff. So it's like, oh, that's really nice. I like that. You're <laughs> starting to convince me here of this, of this play. <laughs> what's um, funny is the plot full of incident does make me think of the law in her hands. So, yeah, we'll table that for now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I loved how Mary just became this, like, background person and she ended up becoming a lot more forward later on in the movie because mm-hmm. like when you first see her she's just the secretary and then after she's like the plot of the movie like she's a part of the the main story mm-hmm. and i really yeah. enjoyed how uh andy at the end the the two ladies were just so helping him out like just when they were talking to him about buying the hotels and they how both like just a part of the whole scene like they were just both like yeah 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 like get a hotel yeah there's gonna be this yeah there's gonna be that and they were both just coming up with the one-liners the whole time to help like convince it Mm-hmm. I, I, I love that part like yeah. it just it made you giggle and i just really enjoyed the energy i yeah. love i mean the thing with gene mirrors murr's performance where but well, i'm not sure how to pronounce it mm-hmm. Mirrors performance is she has no reason to fall for this guy like you know he's no. just a lovable dope but it does the sitcom thing of you know there's a lovable dope dad and then the super hot wife you know sort of thing you know it's the um it's the everybody loves raymond you know married with children yeah it was, you know kind of kind of thing you know uh king of queens cute. is the or example yeah yeah it was cute how they did how she just kind of told him when that situation yeah. arrived saying like okay well when you became famous you lost yourself but now that you can be humble again i'm gonna tell you that i love you and right. i so cute. <laughs> yeah, it's so cute. And it's so like you know, it's it's strangely progressive in that weird way. In the sense, mm. of, like you know, she gets to make her her own decision, and she's was... like, no, I see that you're a decent person underneath this. Why don't we go and buy your nice hotel, and we'll huh. you can you can be a landowner in Athens. It's gonna be fine. You can be a capitalist at home. Yeah. <laughs> 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 You, you, it's the you whole can, opposite from the other movie. <laughs> yeah. You, 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 oh yes. <laughs> you, you can be a you can be a, a, a motel running slum lord in your small town, and you you know eventually in the nineteen seventies it'll be a, a den of drug abuse and uh, uh, yeah. I, I, I love I love at the end um, they're they're doing like the whole. Uh, <laughs> Like, and then we're gonna build in. The, we're gonna build in a renovation. We're gonna build a deck. We're gonna have a pool. We're gonna do all this sort of thing. And they're like, pool in every room. The same, <laughs> the same. Like you know, star. You know, yeah. Mm. Of, like you know, stars mm-hmm. and thing 
for the hotel that they had for the play. I think there's something really, you know, there's something really fun there. Um, mm. An orchard tree and every, I mean, a swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that it's like, there's something weird in the thing of like, no, I know how orchard trees are supposed to look in that scene where it's like, no, the orchard trees don't look right. They need to look this other way. And it's I like, just, dude, uh, this play is going to collapse in on itself and you're talking to me about fucking orchard trees. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a oh. thing that real producers absolutely do, right? And B, <laughs> it would have been really funny if in one of those like reviews, it's like in the orchard trees look phenomenal. That would have been. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, um, I I just wish I mean I love I actually really love this format of kind of like the hour long movie I wish mm-hmm. that we saw like I feel like like prestige television and like streaming television could give us more kind of anthology TV shows that are sort of built around a theme right sort of thing. I feel like it's just kind of a format that's dead, but like, I really love this length because it's just like you sit down, it's 58 minutes or an hour, an hour and two minutes, you get a full story and you're done. And you know, it's, it's, uh, there's no, there's no fat on this, you know, and even, I think you could expand this to 90 minutes or 80 minutes and, you know, stretch out some of these plot points to give us a little bit more background on some of this, but like, Mm. I, it's perfect the way it is. Like, there's no, yeah. I have no issue with uh, with this in, in its current form. So yeah. it's a play yeah. on a movie. Like, it's a play in a movie. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, yeah like yeah. it, it really feel a play bit. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I liked it a lot. Uh, totally recommend it for for if if people can find it. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If if you can find it, please uh, check it out. I mean, there. Uh, yeah, I didn't hunt too hard for it, but I hunted around for it, and it's certainly not. Certainly not a Google search away for you, but uh, you it, it it's the like the both the movies we're talking about tonight. It, it's the it's the Glinda Farrell uh, Warner Brothers Glinda disc. Farrell, is it really? the Glinda Farrell triple feature from the Warner Brothers archive collection? Yeah, I paid twenty two ninety nine for plus shipping, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> of course, well, the way that I managed to get everybody to see this was I physically shipped the disc around. Cause yeah, was, of course. Nobody, yeah, no, we knew we, we didn't. There was no discs. other. There's no other way mm-hmm. to uh, show this movie off of this disc. To, I mean that that was the be benefit. That was the that's the benefit now of, of two weeks be between every every podcast is that we can actually ship the disc between each other yep, in the yep. mail and then we can do the podcast. That's how we do yeah, it. Even even we, internationally it works. It's mm-hmm. a, yeah, it's and, and we really don't live that far from each other. No, it's it's no. very much you know, I mean both uh, both Lee and, and, and Daniel are, you know, somewhat within the Great Lakes area and, and Nova Scotia is just it's just you know, it's just a plane trip away. It's just very it's cool. Water. Water. It's yeah. water. That's yeah, you know, that's close enough. Yeah. <laughs> It was it was shipped on the back of a polar bear to my house. <laughs> on the back of a caribou. <laughs> it's funny that this is like uh, the Glenda collection, and she's not the lead. <laughs> I think I think either her like because what I learned like looking at her filmography like a little bit more closely as I was like prepping here, she goes on to do, and I'm literally sitting and looking at this because she goes on to be in this movie Smart Blonde, which mm-hmm. is the first of the uh, Torchy Blaine movies. Yes. And it's a mystery series. <laughs> there are nine of these films and they're made within like I think three years. It's like geez. Yeah, she's oh she's in she's in seven of them. Oh, is she in she's, seven of them? Okay, yeah. Yeah, there's two that she's yeah. not in, but uh Okay, well uh there is there is also a disc from the Warner Archive collection that can, that has all nine of those films. Oh <laughs> so I, I think we might do some more Glinda Farrell. Yeah, sure idea. Soon. Send us to send us a Patreon dollars, uh, people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying I bought it, but I am saying I put it in my Amazon uh, cart. So, <laughs> ooh, ooh, there you because... go. Send it, send it to Daniel, so he'll buy yeah. it for us. <laughs> because because this this whole thing was you know uh, sort of started by is like we really like Glinda Farrell in right. uh, uh, I'm a fugitive from Chain Gang. And we're like, we need to see more movies of her because she's now a podcast girlfriend and we need to see her movies. And a lot of her movies are her doing this, like, you know, second fiddle to somebody else right. kind of thing. So good, though. Yeah, but yeah. so good. Like, she's she's one of those people's like, you know, she's one of those people like, you know, today you, you see like Steve Buscemi. He should be like. He should be the main guy in a film, but no, he's always like the second guy or, right. you know, kind of thing. He's, I think he might be the first person to ever directly compare Glenda Farrell and Steve Buscemi, and that's what <laughs> I love about you. I mean, that's the hill I'll die on. It's fine. 
<laughs> that's that's she, nothing. Yeah, that's it. I get it. Yeah, no, but she's yeah. she's so good at acting even when it's not on her like your eyes are always on mm-hmm. her because even at the end of the movie when they had that whole interaction there was lots going on her facial expressions and her reactions and how just she moved her body like just that she had the that i'm gonna fuck over my husband look the whole time like, you just felt it like i just this who cares attitude this like <laughs> i'm going to be... like my husband is gonna get fucked on this deal yeah. <laughs> and she has this it's just this vibrancy of her and how she has oh, i loved it yeah, like yeah. Just, well, well is it not she's is so it not, good <laughs> is it did, am i am i uh not correct and i picking up here that in this in in the context of the story uh, so she married this scumbag and she, you know, she probably married him because he was like really exciting when he was younger kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And then it, she learns what a scumbag he is, but she doesn't really care because she's rich as fuck. And yeah, she's, it sounds yeah, like it. She, yeah. yeah, he was, he was like trying to get like money from her to back his production and, and checking she's like, her bank account. Yeah. And she's like, nope. <laughs> like nope you're a loser can't yeah. be divorced because yes. I'd, be a, I'd be a ruined woman but you know like yeah no she guess doesn't... who has the pants in this relationship she's <laughs> she's like sorry weak chinned robert mitchum i'm not giving you any money totally opposite uh, of like the other movie holy jeez <laughs> i got i like that i was watch i was watching the actor who played uh played played her husband uh alan jenkins and I was like, he's kind of he's he's kind of Mitchum, but yeah, but not as not as tough. Like he's just kind of <laughs> he doesn't he's have good, the though. build. He doesn't have the build. He, he's not he's not the tough guy that Robert Mitchum was. He's, he's just kind of yeah. he kind of looks like him. And I'm like, yeah, okay, weak chin Robert Mitchum. Uh, your wife ain't giving you no money, buddy. That's it. Soy boy rocks Robert Mitchum. If you That's right. Mitchum, you if you cuck, real cuck Robert <laughs> cuck Robert <laughs> Mitchum. <laughs> Um, yeah, they hadn't yeah, invented yeah. Cunnilingus at this point, and so uh, that's you know, we know that's right. That's 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 how that's how he could have gotten some cash. I, I mean, when when you look how disappointed most of the ladies are in these films in this era, <laughs> yeah. you pretty much can believe that they had not developed Cunnilingus at this. Point. I mean, I mean, when Andy well, Tucker is like the catch, <laughs> when Andy Tucker is the catch, and all of the movies, like, <laughs> like hold on, that guy, that guy's the real hero. Yeah, okay, well, you know, given oh, the other God. dudes on display. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it. Yeah, kind yeah. of. You know, you can carry on to the other movie, and still, Andy Tucker is like the winner. Oh of yeah, no, no. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, yes. yeah. And uh, we will get to that other movie after a quick musical interlude, and uh, we'll be right back. You ungodly warlock.
you ungodly warlock. All right. The Law in Her Hands from 1936. Uh, hmm. This is directed by William Clemens. Um, of note here, he directed the first four Nancy Drew films from the Warner from Warner Brothers. And really? <laughs> yeah, he did. And I, I think these are probably the first, the very first Nancy Drew film adaptations, if I'm not mistaken. That's um, really interesting. That is he, really interesting. And he did do one of the two uh, films in the <sighs> nine Torchy Blaine films that didn't feature Glenda Farrell, uh, ironically enough. Oh, um, interesting. Yeah. Oh, he's from Saginaw. He's from the Thumb. Look at that. <laughs> uh, written by George Bricker and Lucy Ward, and uh, this is starring. Uh, <laughs> this is only his second film ever. Wow. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, this is Margaret Lindsay as uh, Mary Wentworth, and she was in Babyface, uh, which we've already covered. Uh, she was the... I can't even remember what her character was. She was the wife of another character in the film. I can't even yeah, remember at this one point. Of the, one of the random people in that movie. Yep. Mm. Uh, she actually had a series herself, just like Lynn Carroll <coughs> did. Uh, yeah. Well, although she wasn't the star in it, uh, she was, you know, second build. Uh, she was the secretary to Mystery Lighter mystery writer slash sleuth Ellery Queen and the Ellery Queen series, uh, six yeah, films for Warner Brothers. I could definitely see us doing a couple of those at some point. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Uh, we got Glenda Farrell as Dorothy Dot Davis. Warren Hall as assistant attorney uh, Robert Mitchell. Lyle Talbot as Frank Legs Gordon. <coughs> uh, Eddie Akuf as Eddie O'Malley. Dick Purcell as Marty. Al Sheen as Franz. Addison Richards as William McGuire. Joseph Crean as uh, District Attorney Thomas Mallon, uh, Maddie Fine as uh, Augie Samelli, Milton Kibbe as uh, Herman Strum, and Eddie Schubert as Harry Morton. And we have a synopsis from uh, Chris Stone on IMDb saying, Novice attorneys Mary and Dot open their own practice, confident that their futures look bright. But after months of rising debt and falling income, Mary stumbles into the employee of racketeer Frank Gordon. Financial worries behind them. Mary and Dot start representing the dregs of Morgan society. But will Mary's conscience, not to mention the intervention of her DA boyfriend, oh, fuck this guy, allow her to continue? Oh, yeah. Fuck that guy. Yeah. So yeah. I don't and even. Not in mm-hmm. good way. Anyway. Uh, so I, I here, here's, here's the, here's the quandary. <laughs> who I ask first uh, on this one? Do yeah, I, ask? I know who you should ask first. I yeah, exactly. I, I think I think we're I think we should just throw this right on the fucking table. <laughs> Lee, what's your opinion of <laughs> this film? Oh my god! So I was so excited when I first started this movie. Because I saw these two women back in the 30s becoming lawyers, starting their own business, and even the restaurant. Like you see, the the the, the owner was so stoked <laughs> that uh, one of his servers was leaving. He's like, "Yeah, this is awesome. You're gonna become a lawyer. Like this is whatever." And I've I've worked in places where you tell people that you're gonna go somewhere. And they're like, "Oh, really? Is that gonna work?" Because they want to keep you. Like the the first restaurant I left when I was like 19, they were telling me like, "Oh, you'll be back. You'll be back." And this is like in the 2000s. Or well, it's a it's a it's a bohemian restaurant, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that is true. But again, like even just thinking that I graduated high school in 2007 and my the restaurant that I was working at was telling me that I wasn't going to make it. I was going to be a server again in 2007. So someone yeah. in 1937, like being encouraging his server to be like, yeah, you become a just woman, think, you become a just strong think, person. You, you you could have gotten a law degree and then gone to work for the mob. Like, uh, <laughs> sending him a psych degree to work with psych people. <laughs> psych just people. To, to, to create insanity pleas for mobsters, clearly. That's, <laughs> yes. that's I do. I do want to get a That's what strong women do. They work for the mob or they get married. That's it. exactly. I do yeah. want to work for correctional psychology, so you never know. I might become like another uh, Harley Quinn, where uh, oh boy, fall in love. Oh, like... well, yeah. <laughs> that would be anyway. anyway, anyway, back to it. Anyway, um, yeah. So it was. It was this. I have so many hearts in my notes. Like I have this all. Like oh my god, this is exciting. Um, the I absolutely it was obsessed with the clothes. Um, I was I loved how they kept saying swell. I thought it was so cute. Like I know that was kind of their lingo. 
Uh, again, I put like this heart with owner loves a successful server. Um, and then the puppy, when uh, Glenda is uh, washing her puppy, I thought it was really cute. <laughs> and how they went into court and they were so like badass. Like, hey, yeah, you try to threaten us. Guess what? In your face. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I was, it built me up. And I was like, oh my God, this movie is all about strong women. Mm-hmm. Uh, when the one lawyer asked uh, Mary on a date, I was like, ooh, yeah, because because uh, Robert was like, he's a handsome man. Like those eyes, like those were some, sure. like they could steal your soul eyes. Yeah, uh, apparently that's what he did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At the end of the film, that's clearly what happened. I mean, there's definitely like an invasion of the body snatchers thing happening in this movie. He's very much the villain of this piece. <laughs> oh Jeez, yes, that, this is exactly it. Um, I think even funny like. We were talking about just people in general. Like when we we're talking about uh, the winner in the last movie, Andy being the winner. And mm-hmm. this is it basically it because you see this guy who's super successful and super handsome. And he ends up being like the worst of all of the men. Like, mm-hmm. um, he's, he's, he's Kilgrave. We figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> Jessica, Jessica Jones. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 it just. <laughs> It crushed my soul. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> the first thing that I hated was that he called her baby because <laughs> I mm. hate that. It's it's I hate I hate pet names and baby's probably one of my worst ones. Baby or baby. No. Um. <laughs> then, oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, I need to slow down a bit. Um. So when she has her first court case where it's her own thing and the other lawyers end up cheating, um, it was it broke my heart because you saw her working so hard and then just which i didn't realize how easy it was to cheat on cases back in the day like holy I, shit I, I, I think i think there's some i don't think this film is an accurate representation no of legal, not at all even in 1936 <laughs> just to be fair it's like I oh well, we that. want to get the evidence and then suddenly it's like there's a bottle of liquor in this coat. Clearly, this was never like, um, yeah, no. Yeah, that, that yeah. would not hold up to any scrutiny. Not even today. No. It, it would not. No. You can't not even the back then. Like, oh, well, you're just a lady lawyer. So clearly, you missed this key piece of evidence. And yeah, if that's sort of the thing about, they like, were insulting. doing, then you could sort you of st- like, you stupid broad. But it's not even that. It's just like, you know. <laughs> like, oh, no, there's a bottle of liquor in here. And we just now noticed it, despite. Like, yeah, no, that's yeah, holding no. it the whole yeah, time, works. putting it for evidence and blah, blah, blah. But anyways, yeah, uh, I, I quoted like the whole technology for cases because now even the pictures, it's like, well, hold on a second. We have the actual date of this picture uh, and we can tell if it's been mod- or changed and stuff. Um, but when she lost the case, it was just it it, it broke my heart because it was like I thought this was really about uh, empowering females. And then uh, when she was talking to her lawyer boyfriend, uh, Robert. The, the ADA, yeah. Yeah, she she just talked to him. He's like, you know what happens? It happens. And I thought, I was like, oh, he's going to be really encouraging. And he's like, just quit being a lawyer. Become <laughs> Mrs. Robert Mitchell. And I honestly wrote, gross. <laughs> yeah, it is gross. It's fucking gross as fuck. I fucking <laughs> hate that. And it gets worse. <laughs> it, it does. It gets worse. <laughs> It like, does. You're like, wow. I just kind of looked at the plot synopsis, and I know this is bad, but it's all right. It's, uh, it's just a plot point, and then it becomes like, you know, I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna pull a dirty trick on you. I'm gonna discourage you from being a lawyer. I'm literally going to crush your career because yeah. I can. Oh my god! Yes, <laughs> yes. And then what is? Well, then what happens? He teaches her the dirty tricks. That she ends up using for the mob lawyer. Like, this guy is awful. I mean, this is literally like Two Face level bullshit. Mm -hmm. So manipulative, so fucking controlling. It just, oh my god, Lee, I don't understand why you made me watch this. I didn't make you watch it. (laughs) Like you know what kind of, kind of way I, am. I mean like, I again just... I again I told you I had not watched it before and I did not know it was I watched it on the same day you did. So like an nope. hour before me. No. I did, I did not actually not watch gonna, it before gonna, you. I watched it after you. So that's not true. I'm going to take I'm going to take the L on this one. This was my fault. <laughs> I saw <clears throat> mystery mob movie with two female leads in 1936 and thought I'm down for this. Like, I want to see it. Like, you know, it's probably not going to be great, but it'll be interesting and it'll be cool and it'll be something fun to watch. And then it literally just, it starts off 
it's doing a thing it's not great but it's got some cool people it was there's some ingrained sexism etc cetera, etc cetera. and then it just shit all over my television it was just like it just went, oh, what the missus, why don't we just lay a giant runny turd just all over the screen the mrs uh, robert the mitchell was literally that point of oh my fucking god that was like the moment where i realized where this movie was going that was like this is like my worst nightmare to ever, if ever I got married and I was called Mrs. Whatever, I, that is my nightmare because I hate the idea. Like, I remember I answered the phone when I was a kid and someone said, is Mrs. Robert Hardy there? And I said, no, there's no Mrs. Robert Hardy. There's a Mr. Robert Hardy and there's a Vicky Hardy, Mrs. Vicky Hardy. Because I was so mad. They didn't use my mom's name and I was so mad. And that's literally the point in this movie where I wanted to rage quit in the movie. She's like, I'm done. I'm done. I didn't. I kept watching. <laughs> it just got worse. But uh, he basically tells her that um, she needs to quit becoming a lawyer and just marry her and become like a housewife. Yeah. Uh. yeah. <laughs> and then... Um, he sets her up for failure. He literally sets her up for failure. He's like, hey, I got you this case. And by the way, I, I got the confession out. So you don't even have a case anymore because I want to convince you to marry me. Yeah. Fuck you. Because <laughs> she, tell, she tells this guy, she tells this motherfucker, it's like, okay, I want to marry you because I think you're sexy and whatever. But give me a year of this lawyer thing. You know, the, this dalliance that I have, which immediately threw up red flag because like no like you worked really fucking hard to become a lawyer in 1930s america as a female like you had to really bust your ass and get educated to get there and you're gonna throw that all away for this dipshit full time as a waitress in new york city at that can can we not remember the fact that dot's also working in the sperm like what is she supposed to do like just forget about her and just like oh cool that that disappointed me so much like there were so many different places this film could have gone like it could have became like a conflict between dot and her where dot you know even though you know early on dots like we got to make money we got to make money but when she discovers that this is the way we're making money we're working for this crime boss and you're letting your da boyfriend string you along and do dirty tactics no we got to fucking not do that like there's a really interesting conflict there where yeah. it could have been really fun, really well done, <clears throat> could have got some you know serious drama in with there the comedy. Have been a movie, yeah. Yes, oh, movie. And, and I was like, I was like, I, I was just so, I, I mean, you know, I was just so fucking disappointed. Like the places this movie could have, and I mean, it's nineteen thirty. Seven, I six, don't seven. Care. Here's, here's where no. we, here's where we here's where we have to like back up slightly, right? Mm. This is post code. Yeah. And I think the conception of the movie was pre code because like female protagonists becoming lawyers, getting into the CD business, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, going off and having an adventure. Pre code, they were allowed to have their own ending. And yeah. the movie clearly has this sort of like almost like femme fatale or like this sort of like bad girl because she gets in with the wrong crowd and then she gets like driven with power and then she ends up, you know, kind of like suffering a defeat because of it or whatever, you know, like there's clearly a baby face style story. Here. Yes, there's a very uh, proto noirish kind of thing going oh, yeah, on yeah, here. Definitely. There's a massive amount of abuse in this, like. But instead, they go, no, she's going to fall in love with the ADA at the end. Yeah. Because we need to have a happy ending. Because you have to marry off the woman now because we're in the code. And so now um, we get to then redesign the entire movie. We get to go back and make them, like, have to start falling in love and putting in these terrible scenes. Like, if you just take the ADA character out or if he's just not a romantic interest... There's a movie here. Like, there's something mm-hmm. interesting going on. It's but, all this like fucking ADA character. But no, she's she's got to she's got to fall in love with Joe Biden. It's it's fine. It's not you... even Joe Biden. She's got to fall in love with like Mitch McConnell. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember uh, that video I sent you where it was like women know your place? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is what this exactly it is. Me of. It is. It is. It yeah. was this perfect moment of this woman who's actually brilliant and speaks her mind and does everything, and it's like, hold on a second, lady, you're a lady, and that's all. That's all. Like, it's 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 
the fact that even in the newspapers where it's like woman lawyer woman lawyer lady lawyer woman lawyer and it just it kept going and it just showed like this oh, no, control the, yeah and even when the the mobster or the the gangster like the leader of that gang was just like yeah you can have anything i'll even marry you and it's like wait wait what why like i don't understand <laughs> Why? I, I, Why? Do, I, do, I do like the gangsters in this. Like, I, I like the idea. Like, you know, this is like the the modern gangster, right? Like, mm-hmm. we're we're, we're going to get to. It's, legit... it's not 1928 anymore, sir. Exactly. <laughs> where we're getting, we're getting in the legit business. Like, our racketeering is going to be above the board. You know, legally, yeah. basically. Uh, he he, you know, he 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 lambastes his underlings for using that. Uh, uh, a perfume apple bomb, whatever the fuck yeah, thing the, that he the threw, with, bomb thing, yeah, which yeah. is a legit thing that was used back in the day, and uh, you know, extortion it's, and all that stuff. It's kind of unfortunate because even if you think about it, like the the guy, um, the leader of uh, this gang, he actually appreciated uh, Mary for being so independent and strong, and so for doing all these things. He's actually much um, more respectable than the DA. <laughs> yeah, because if he's you actually think a much it, better catch, right? Like, yeah, who would you yeah. rather be with? Yeah, I mean, sure, he kills people, but at least he's not, like, a dipshit. Come on. Yeah. He doesn't manipulate and control his fucking girl. No, no uh, he just murders people. It's fine. But, no, yeah. I mean, it's, but, but, I mean, he, he is, like, poisoning milk. I mean, you know, come on, we're not, like, let's not. Who cares? <laughs> yeah. Let's not paint a halo on the at guy At least he's anything, respecting you know? the fucking women. <laughs> I, mean, he, I mean, you know, he's no, he's no different than Abe Lincoln. You know, he you know, poison, poisoned the milk of school children. You know, it's fine. <laughs> um... <laughs> So, you want to get that Simpsons reference? Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Uh, I'm just laughing. I'm. I'm. (laughs) There's so many things I want to say about this movie. It's so bad. It's so bad. um, Yeah. I I really, really enjoyed the the quick newspaper. Like when. uh, Oh my God! There's so many newspaper. Like if if, if there, if there, if this was a drinking game for this movie, drink every time you see a newspaper headline, you'd be dead. You'd be fucking dead. Like all, it was like five minutes later. They're like, "Hey, by the way, new new newspaper headline." Like it was faster than social media. Like we literally have the internet where we can post things, and this newspaper was faster at delivering the news. Yeah. Like it just it showed us through the time lapse. It's crazy. Newspaper headlines like um, a Twitter scroll. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the end of the movie absolutely, like the whole end of the movie absolutely broke my heart because this movie was literally showing women have no place in the working force. That's all this movie was. It was basically saying. Women maybe can be smart. Women can try and be independent, but they shouldn't be because they won't make it because it's a man's world. The working world is a man's world because you saw this whole part where she's getting disbarred and it's heartbreaking. Like you can, she like I was volunteers like, herself to be disbarred too. Yeah. She has yeah. to, she has to humiliate herself. She can't yes. just go, I'm going to leave the legal profession and go marry this guy. Like if that's the ending, that's it's stupid, but that's the ending. But yeah. she has to be humiliated by the movie. You did this. And she has to do it to herself. The movie saying she has to apologize for being a smart woman who has agency. That's mm-hmm. exactly what the movie says. That she that she engaged in some shady practices, which every other fucking lawyer in the movie was already. Yeah. yeah the one who beat her at you know. first literally did yeah. it worse than she did. Like in front mm-hmm. of her, and um, yeah, the, the message, just, like, like even early on, it's like uh, lawyering is is a game that's you know too hardcore for delicate women, and women shouldn't be in it. It's it's a man's game, you know that that's what you got to do. Like it it can be dirty and corrupt, but men, <laughs> and despite it, the okay, fact that it's her it's, clever tactic, yeah, that leads to the uh, to the actual conviction of the. Murder, right? Like, it's her clever lawyering and her clever, like, setting up her own client. Uh, which, by the way, she should be disbarred for that. Like, that is actually a disbarring you know, thing. You're, but they should be disbarred for like, not allowed booze. to do. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, you, you can do a lot of stuff, but, you know, like, mm. going against your client, I mean, that's actually a little, like, like that's like, the legal profession does. Oh yeah, uh, you actually will get, it was, you actually will get up on. It was like this. She chose a conscience of heart, so she <laughs> she is actually an actual amazing woman for doing that, and blah 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 blah. And then she she chose the right decision of like being in, uh, humiliated. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to salvage this movie, and I think that she just has a humiliation fetish, and that this. Is, <laughs> Oh, She's God. just really into it, you know, and that's just, uh, that's, the, yeah, only fucking, that, that's the only end. way to save this. That's Ooh. the only way to save this is that 
you know, they're in this like deep 24 seven BDSM relationship in which she has a humiliation fetish and he has shown her up publicly. And she's just like, absolutely going. So this, is, this is 1930s, How? 50 shades of gray is what you're saying. Yeah. No, it's like secretary, but you know, oh, it's yeah, terrible. it's like secretary, but how Wait, long were they seeing each other before he proposed to her? Like, that's what I want to say. No, no, no. These movies did literally like, Oh, hot girl. Like you want to marry me? Like no, this is this this is this era of cinema. I mean, yeah. it doesn't have to be that. We've seen but, movies where you see a woman ar- across the room, introduce yourself, buy a drink, and then go, "Well, you should marry me now." Like, mm, you know, that's- yeah, no, I, I think I think they kind of imply like there there's a history there, but it's like the movie's too short to like give you that meat to the plot kind of thing. But even so- if you compare like the 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 cases that go on, there's not that much time between them. No. Um, the only reason I bring it up is because right at the end, she's like, well, I've been disbarred, so do I have to propose to you, or are we going to get married? Like, ah, uh, <laughs> I just can't do it. It's, I told you, being a lawyer is not for a lady. Like, fuck you. Fuck no, you. It's, it's, it, is, it, is, it is a super, uh, it is a super, it is a super know. shitty disappointment of a film. Like, the first half, yeah. like, the first, like, 20 minutes or so are, like, right on this is cool like this is going places and then this like is, this is getting, i was i was like mystery thriller with like two like amazing bodacious like hot women in 1937 i am down for this yes i, I was thinking then, like, I was thinking, no. this is really good why is this why is this not a series of films because these two together solving cases yeah. this should be a 1930s like serial films from warner brothers kind of thing you know second feature films or whatever and then it was like oh this is why because she's not a lawyer anymore. Wah, wah. This is this. I can imagine. Okay, so I can't even imagine being a woman who was trying to be independent and strong back in that day and seeing this movie. Because like even back then, you had to work twice as hard to become like anything that's uh, equal to what men are in the legal field or whatever field you do. Like you, either you're super hot and you make it in like a, an obvious field. Or you have to work insanely hard. And then seeing this was just like, I, I can't imagine how many women who really wanted to do something saw this thinking it was going to be a strong female lead and then being like, wow, why the fuck do I even try? What about Glenda Farrell, too? She doesn't get lambasted like Margaret does. Well, like she's not she, trying to be like the head. She's just well, trying to be. Yeah, she's, you know. she's not trying to like have the like the agency that she has. She's she, and also she's not like attached to a man. So it's like she doesn't. You know, she's not at the. She's not at the whims of some dude who wants to the like. The movie make just her doesn't husband. really have enough time for her. She kind of gets yeah. to be a comic. She's relief. a very. Um, uh, alongside, yeah. alongside our our buddy. Um, uh, oh, oh, Lara my Talbot. Fa- my favorite character. Uh, no, uh, that was funny. Uh, uh, Fucking Eddie uh, O'Malley. Eddie Akif. Eddie Akif is Eddie O'Malley. Eddie O'Malley. Yeah, yeah. Wait, who? who th- I want to see this dude's film. He's the process server who always gets beat up every time he serves <laughs> papers to somebody. <laughs> it's Seth I Rogen's that. character that was like... from um, Pineapple Express. <laughs> like a, that, was, you know. <clears throat> that was the only enjoyable part of the movie. That part actually made me laugh. No, he, um, he's hilarious. And I think Glenda Farrell has a great chemistry with him because yeah, you know, a lot of times like, she's got to like again there's a fun movie off to the side here that we could just be watching that movie instead and you know no well. but <laughs> my notes literally just said i don't like this movie sad face no 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's enough like i think that's yeah we're kind of done <laughs> yeah <laughs> <to say. laughs> Um, I mean, I guess we got some trivia here, but uh, other than that, no. no, I got no trivia on this one. Oh, uh, I did have, I did have one uh, other. I mean, we mentioned him, but uh, Al Sheen, who mm-hmm. uh, is the uh, the owner of the Bohemian. Oh restaurant. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this man was born in 1868. By the way, Whoa, <laughs> we, shoot, <laughs> yeah, holy, holy fuck. Um, he was a vaudeville performer um, uh, on stage, and he was part of the God vaudeville team Gallagher and Sheen, um, and as the uncle of the Marx Brothers. So, um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. His sister married Sam Frenchy Marx. Their sons would become the Marx Brothers. Holy shit. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, 
later on after like kind of around the say in the 30s he starts doing some some films and uh, he includes a priest in hitler's madman which was the very first film in 1943 made about um um heydrich the uh, the butcher <laughs> one of the uh, one of the architects of the holocaust no um, so- right yeah so that was definitely one of those like um and reading between the lines is like oh this is the first guy who gets murdered by uh hydric after uh the yeah yeah no this is, oh. this thing, yeah. and the movie was made shortly after hydric himself uh died um you know so uh that that was great i was just kind of like oh what else has he done and i'm like hitler's bad man and then you go <laughs> oh, oh oh right you know but um, I- yeah so he was great. I loved him in this movie. I mean, I love mm-hmm. that kind of like kindly old grandfather kind of character. I mean, Tell patriarchy is beginning. terrible, but when the patriarch is at least like kind man and you clearly like loves the people around him and like wants to be a good person, you can at least go like you shouldn't have the power, but if someone does have the power, better you than that dipshit ADA over there, mm. you know. And I mean, it was uh, so sweet. It was so sweet. <laughs> and I mean, I think this sound club that uh, I will play now uh, pretty much sums up what he was in fa- favor of. Single female lawyer fighting for her client, wearing sexy mini skirts and being self reliant. Single female lawyer having lots of sex. That's perfect. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, no, but if that that's had perfect. been the movie we, we saw, you know. Yeah, that's, that's the movie I wanted. That's what I assume that, yeah. I just assume that's, that's what Glenda was doing. Like while Mary yeah, and all this crazy stuff, that's what Isabel and Glenda was doing. Like she yeah, was, yeah, she yeah. was this like strong, independent. Like yeah, I'm the five witches. They're so cute. No, they're not cute. I mean, that's the movie. that's the movie. She t- she tells her partner, "Fuck you, you fucking sellout loser. I'm gonna be a fucking female lawyer, and I'm gonna fucking do it." Yeah. And then doesn't do it. Yeah. And then she goes, um, well, maybe, maybe, you know, we only see, like, the cases that uh, the other character gets, uh, the, the Mary gets. Mm-hmm. Like, that's maybe, true. maybe uh, Glenda Farrell's out there actually, like, making bank for the place. That's you know, why she's like, like, it's so sweet. Yeah, Got that bitch whole, out of my way. <laughs> this, whole, this whole mob lawyer thing is going to go south real fast, and I'm not putting my name on any of the fucking paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, random fact uh john warren died on september 14th which happens to be my birthday saw that thought it was cool you take, that's you, it you taking credit was, for a guy uh no because he died in like 1970 something uh bob oh. mitchell ah. the guy who played bob mitchell he died on september 14th and as soon as i saw that i'm like it's my birthday <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> so I I, I, are you do you have an alibi <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't born yet. I was born 1988, oh, okay. so I oh, was okay, not okay, even okay. a twinkle in my dad's eye. All so, right, uh, <laughs> so you're saying your dad killed him? Yeah, clearly. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. I think he's a victim of the Zodiac or something. <laughs> yeah, it could be. That's the way it works. Is your dad? The Zod- is your dad the Zodiac killer, or Lee? He could be. Not the he first is- time we've asked that question on this podcast. <laughs> I mean, your dad is pretty badass. So you could, it, yeah. It could be- It'd be true. Yeah. Um, if if you hear like wheels squeaking behind you, then you know it's my dad. Like <laughs> a lot faster than you with his friggin' walker, but uh, <laughs> definitely <laughs> definitely not as agile. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, what are we doing next? I don't know. Uh, let me just pop up the old uh, uh, spreadsheet here. We'll see where we are. Probably a plan. Uh, okay cut out some of this <laughs> yeah nah it's fine the people love it um people love us randomly doing this so we're um, we're in 1937 now basically yeah um uh, oh hey bring up baby in 1938 bring up baby yeah if you want to do some more um screwball comedy hmm what is the amazing dr clitterhouse it's it's not it, the the title is much cooler than the movie itself. Is it? I exactly what it is, but it's not. Oh, that's unfortunate. It's kind of cool going back to all these movies. Uh, it does I have Edward G. Robinson. I think it's a um, it's kind of a kind of a weirdo like um, mad science horror movie thing. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So let's uh, let's do that, and also sure. um, 
And then, like, the episode after that, uh, what's The Lady Vanishes? That sounds familiar to me. The Lady Vanishes is, um, it's a noir. It's an early noir. Okay. Oh, it's Hitchcock. It's Hitchcock. Oh, yeah, that's, that's what, I th- what I thought. Okay, so yeah. um, let's do The Amazing Dr. Clearhouse next. And then, sure. Then let's... the episode after that will be The Lady Vanishes, I think. Anything, anything that allows me to type the word "clit" five hundred yeah, times next that was, is going to be gonna that. Be would, that's what it, that's what attracted me to the title. Liz. Looks like it Hi. looks like it's on YouTube, so we should be okay with that. Cool. Sweet. That's always the problem. Is like we think, oh yeah, we should be able to see that, and then like, oh, it's impossible to find. Yeah. <laughs> would you spend money on the uh, water archive disc? <laughs> um, I'm definitely enjoying going back and like watching all these movies because. The one thing I find really interesting is always the sets because it's never the same. Uh, like I know for a lot of sets too, that sometimes they'll just like paint the sets for bank ra- backgrounds. Yep. So it's really cool. Like the same with Dance Charlie Dance. You just saw yep. how they used the one set multiple times or just how long they used it for. I just thought it was so cool. Like it's so cool okay, watching I mean, and, going back to these and movies. And a movie like The Law on Her Hands, like these, this would have been shot in like two weeks or something. Like this, mm-hmm. is, this is a super quick production schedule. Uh, yeah. They just blew just, through these. Well, I mean, I like, they're the shooting sets. like four at a time. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, you know. Yeah. I mean, like, Glenda Farrell's probably like literally like shooting this and then going off to another fucking uh, uh, studio and, and shooting another one, you know, like, d- like walking across the street to another set of fucking, you I know, backdrops. I think she's a contract player at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, so I, I didn't good. mean like going to another studio. I meant like, you know, she's walking across the street to another bunch of like sets and stuff and then shooting right. another one the same week. Right. Kind of thing. Well, I think we should plan on doing the Torchy Blaine, at least a couple of Torchy Blaine movies mm-hmm. at some point. Um, and those start off pretty soon. So we can we can kind of dance around the late 30s for the next uh, few weeks. I think I think that's the plan. Yeah, that sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, so, uh, Daniel, where can people find you on the interweb? I'm on Twitter at Daniel Lee Harper. Um, come follow me. There are like 8,300 of you now. <laughs> it's <laughs> astonishing. Um, I do another podcast. It's about terrible people, about Nazis, modern day Nazis, old school Nazis. I just did a, an episode about um, old school computer networks in the late 80s or the, the, the mid to late 80s. And the uh, first time that white nationalist material appeared on a computer network on old school BBSs. Um, so go hmm. check that one out if that is an interesting topic to you. It's a dry episode, but it's got a lot of uh, cool stuff in it. Um, you can cool. find that podcast. It's called I Don't Speak German, and you can find it at I Don't Speak German. Cool. Also, awesome for Patreon, patreon.com slash Daniel Lee Harper. So. Yeah. And uh, you're actually getting bonus content now. He, yeah. He, he, yeah. Yeah, we did uh, uh, We did Punishment Park for our January uh, dollar a month to either myself or my co-host, Jack. You can get that. Um, and we're, uh, we were going to f- record for the third band um, this week, and then uh, Jack was not feeling well. So we ended up having to push that off. So you'll get that sometime before the end of February. Ooh. So, yeah, and I think we're going to talk about because on that podcast, we try to use the movie episodes to talk about sort of like – larger issues and so it's not really like a movie review it's kind of a discussion around the the themes and so Uh i think we're going to try to use that to talk a bit about like the pandemic and the sort of inadequacy of like sort of like government response to like human life and the way that uh scammers and frauds and the systems that are around us are supposed to protect us are like harry like harry lime giving you know like harry lime uh diluting uh (laughs) diluting penicillin which mm-hmm. was very new at this point, <laughs> brand new <laughs> material. You know? Yeah. Um, you know, in the late forties. So yeah. So yeah, we haven't recorded that one yet, but that's sort of the plan. So uh, yeah, please go check it out. Cool. Uh, Lady Lee, you have anything to plug? I have. Okay. So I have my one friend who is a, a Dutch beer reviewer. So mm-hmm. if you want to listen to a, a sexy Dutch accent, go there. Thomas Opent is his page. He does have English reviews as well. I'm going to throw that out there because he has been watching or listening to our channel. So uh, mm-hmm. I want to say a massive thank you to him for kind of sharing it and definitely go check his channel out. Yeah. And uh, he'll actually probably be appearing on this podcast at some point where we're going yeah. to get him on. So, yeah. I have to find something made in Holland. Uh, Tobias Millicent, uh, we're 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 going to get you on here at some point. He'll he'll love that. Um, <laughs> <He will. laughs> this has been a running. This has been a running joke of me mispronouncing his name uh, the last couple <laughs> weeks. So, yeah. 
Um, but yeah, you can find us at tmbdos.podbean.com or you can find our Facebook, YouTube, uh, iTunes, Amazon, Apple Podcasts, whatever the fuck they're called, links. I don't know. All the yeah, places I mean, that podcasts are, you can find us at all. Yeah, places. I mean, you could, if, if you were so inclined, people out there, I usually don't ask for this, but if, if you do want to go to any of those places, any of those podcatchers or just go to the actual Apple Podcast site, which is a pain in the ass to use Apple podcast, but if you want to do it and leave us a review, five-star review, whatever, you know, that's good for us. More people can find us that way. And so um, if if you want to do that, that's fine. If you don't want to do that, well, fuck you. (laughs) I mean, you, you, you'll pay our bills. So whatever. Um, But we do one of my Patreon supporters, in which case, thank you. You you do actually help out considerably. So yes. Yeah. So you guys are fine. The rest of you you are scum, Uh, but keep listening to us scum because you know, you like being treated that way. Um, But no, (laughs) they have a humiliation fetish. Just like (laughs) poor Margaret Lindsay. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Get in the kitchen. Bake me a pie. The listeners um but no uh keep talking that way <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh but yeah no we, we do we do appreciate you guys listening uh and uh thank you daniel lee for joining me and uh we'll be back when we're back goodbye bye bye cheers
Thank you for listening to They Must Be Destroyed on Sight. For further episodes, our Apple Podcasts, Facebook, and YouTube links, please go to tmbdos.podbean.com. Thank you. Drive through. <laughs>